iris repair to fix a damaged pupil. How can we make a pupil that has been damaged and that has an irregular shape more normal? Let me walk you through the process. This 28-year-old woman sustained an injury to her right eye at the age of six that damaged the lens, the iris, and the pupil inside of her eye. The iris is the brown colored structure inside the eye. The pupil is the central opening through which we see. The pupil expands and constricts to control the amount of light that enters the eye. If the pupil is damaged as it is in this patient, it is unable to decrease in size to control the amount of light that enters the eye. As a result, everything this patient sees appears like an overexposed photo where the aperture of the camera is stuck in the open position. Her symptoms were blurred vision and extreme light sensitivity caused by her irregular pupil and a cataract. She chose to undergo cataract surgery and pupiloplasty, which is a surgical repair of a damaged pupil. The goal was to normalize the size and shape of the pupil of her right eye and correct her traumatic cataract. This is our view through our surgical microscope in the operating room. Her pupil has been pharmacologically dilated to allow us to remove the cataract and insert a symphony lens implant. Once the implant is aligned and centered, we instill myostat to bring her pupil back to its normal conformation. Nineoproline suture, shown here, will be used to repair the pupil and iris defect. Microforceps stabilize the iris in the area of the torn iris sphincter. The suture needle is passed as close to the edge of the iris as possible, too close to the edge, and the iris may tear as the needle is passed. Passing the needle too far from the pupil edge will not create an optimal cosmetic result. The suture is then exteriorized and tied using a Seepser sliding slip knot technique with a 3-1-1 tie. The ends of the suture are then trimmed. A small defect in the iris remains between the newly formed pupil and the iris root. One additional suture is placed to close this defect. The suture is again tied using the Seepser sliding slip knot. Here is the appearance of the iris and pupil at the end of the procedure. Our goal was to match the size of the right pupil with the size of the left pupil for optimal cosmesis. The patient noted significantly improved vision and reduction in glare and light sensitivity. Prior to surgery, she could not go outside without having to wear sunglasses due to the glare from the dilated pupil. Now with a normal sized pupil, she's able to see better and experience a more normal life. I hope this video was helpful for you. Thank you for your time and attention. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you on the next video.